Welcome to the Bible Quiz. In this video, we embark on a captivating exploration of God's righteousness and compassion. To clarify this topic, join us on this journey as we uncover the timeless truths embedded in the narratives of Nineveh and Sodom, stories that speak to the core of God's teachings and His relentless pursuit of guiding humanity towards repentance and righteous living. We have designed 25 interactive multiple choice questions to enrich your Bible study and add an element of fun while making the learning process more accessible. Now let's get started. Question 1. Whom did the Lord send to Nineveh to preach about their disobedience? A. Jonah B. Isaiah C. Haggai D. Jeremiah. You get 10 seconds. That's A, Jonah. Jonah, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Question 2. How did Jonah describe the size of Nineveh in the book of Jonah? A. A one-day journey in extent. B. A two-day journey in extent. C. A three-day journey in extent. D. A four-day journey in extent. You get 10 seconds. That's C, a three-day journey in extent. Jonah chapter 3, verse 3. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. This description highlights the magnitude of Nineveh, suggesting that it was a large and significant urban center. Question 3. What was the time frame given for the impending overthrow of Nineveh in Jonah's message? A. 40 days. B. 30 days. C. 20 days. D. 10 days. You get 10 seconds. That's A. 40 days. Jonah, chapter 3, verse 4. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. This time frame served as a warning for the people to repent and turn from their wickedness. Question 4. How did the people of Nineveh respond to Jonah's message? A. They ignored it. B. They mocked Jonah. C. They repented and sought God. D. They became hostile towards Jonah. You get 10 seconds. That's C. They repented and sought God. Jonah, chapter 3, verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. The act of the people of Nineveh signifies a collective acknowledgement of their sinful ways and a genuine desire for divine mercy. Question 5. What did the king of Nineveh do in response to Jonah's message? A. Ignored it. B. Put Jonah in jail. C. Banished Jonah from the city. D. Issued a decree of repentance. You get 10 seconds.
That's D, issued a decree of repentance. Jonah chapter 3 verses 6 to 7. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, This act of humility and repentance demonstrated the king's earnest desire for his people to seek forgiveness from God. Adored mate, subscribe today and become part of our community. May God bless you. Question 6. What was the king's hope regarding God's response to their repentance? A. God would turn and relent. B. God would destroy another city. C. God would spare the city from destruction. D. God would guide the king to leave the city safely. You get 10 seconds. That's A, God would turn and relent. Jonah chapter 3 verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Question 7. How did God react to the repentance of the people of Nineveh? A. Ignored them. B. Relented from the disaster. C. Sent few plague instead of disaster he planned. D. Instructed people of Nineveh to go to another city. You get 10 seconds. That's B. Relented from the disaster. Jonah, chapter 3, verse 10. Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This event demonstrates God's willingness to show mercy when people genuinely turn from their sinful ways and seek him. Question 8. Who did God tell he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? A. Abraham B. Isaac C. Jacob D. Joseph You get 10 seconds. That's A. Abraham Genesis chapter 18, verses 16 to 21. The act of the Lord informing Abraham showcases God's transparency and willingness to involve his faithful servant in the divine decision-making process. Question 9. When knowing the plan of God regarding Sodom and Gomorrah, what did Abraham do? A. Ignored the information. B warned the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. C. Advice Lot seek refuge in another city. D. Tried to bargain and beg God to consider leniency. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Tried to bargain and beg God to consider leniency. Genesis chapter 18 verses 22 to 33. Abraham's act reveals his compassion and concern for the well-being of the inhabitants, as well as his boldness in approaching God on their behalf. Besides, this negotiation also reveals his divine willingness to consider alternative outcomes and demonstrate compassion ultimately highlighting God's desire to show mercy when a righteous and earnest plea is presented. Question 10. How many righteous people did Abraham bargain to beg God save the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah from destruction? A. 5. 
B. 10 C. 15 D. 20 You get 10 seconds. That's B, 10, Genesis chapter 18, verse 32. Then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak, but once more, suppose ten should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. God's willingness to spare the cities if even a small number of righteous individuals were found exemplifies his compassionate nature. Question 11. Who did God send to Sodom for starting out his judgment? A. Prophets B. Angels C. Healers D. Criminals You get 10 seconds. That's B, angels, Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. Question 12. How did Lot react when he saw the two angels in Sodom? A, ignored them. B, fled in fear. C, called for the city guards. D, bowed down with his face to the ground. You get 10 seconds. That's D, bowed down with his face to the ground. Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. This gesture reflects Lot's recognition of the significance of the heavenly visitors in the context of the impending judgment on the city. Question 13. What did Lot propose to the angels after bowing down to them? A. Advise them to visit other cities. B. Stayed in his house. C. Asked them to bless his family. D sought shelter in the city gates. You get 10 seconds. That's B, stayed in his house. Genesis chapter 19, verses two to three. And he said, here now, my lords, Please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. This detail reflects Lot's righteousness and sense of hospitality, contrasting with the wickedness of the surrounding city. Question 14. What did the people of Sodom do when they knew the two angels were in Lot's house? A. They ignored their presence. B. They invited the angels to a communal gathering. C. They welcomed them with hospitality. D. They required Lot to hand over his guests to them. You get 10 seconds. That's D. They required Lot to hand over his guests to them. Genesis chapter 19, verses 4 to 5. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. This hostile reaction underscores the extreme wickedness of the people in Sodom. Question 15. What alternative did Lot offer to the men of Sodom to protect the angels? A. His daughters. B. 
B. His own life. C. A sacrificial offering. D. His wealth and possessions. You get 10 seconds. That's A, his daughters. Genesis chapter 19, verses 6 to 8. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men. This drastic proposal illustrates the severity of the situation and Lot's desperation to safeguard the heavenly visitors from harm. Question 16. How did the men of Sodom react to Lot's offer of his daughters? A. They accepted Lot's offer. B. They left without causing harm. C. They rejected the offer and threat Lot. D. They ridiculed Lot for his offer. You get 10 seconds. That's C. They rejected the offer and threat Lot. Genesis chapter 19, verse 9. And they said, Stand back. Then they said, This one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. This narrative further emphasizes the extreme wickedness and hostility prevalent in the city of Sodom. Question 17. What did the angels do to the men at the doorway of Lot's house? A. Killed them. B. Blinded them. C. Rendered them immobile. D. Gave them a chance for redemption. You get 10 seconds. That's B, blinded them. Genesis chapter 19, verses 10 to 11. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great. The act of two angels was a divine intervention, thwarting immediate violence. Besides, it also symbolized the moral blindness of Sodom's inhabitants and foreshadowed impending judgment for the city's pervasive wickedness. Question 18. What did the angels do to protect Lot and his family before they destroy Sodom? A. Provided Lot with weapons. B. Instructed them to hide in their homes. C. Advised Lot and his family to flee the city. D. Called for divine intervention. You get 10 seconds. That's C, advise Lot to flee the city. Genesis chapter 19, verses 12 to 13. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city, take them out of this place. This act demonstrated divine mercy and compassion, providing an opportunity for the righteous to escape impending judgment. Question 19. Who did not believe Lot when he told them about what was to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah? A. Lot's servants. B. Lot's brothers-in-law. C. Lot's neighbors. D. Lot's daughter's fiancé. You get 10 seconds. That's B, Lot's brothers-in-law. Genesis, 
chapter 19, verses 12 to 14. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who had married his daughters and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But to his sons-in-law he seemed to be joking. Question 20. What specific instruction did the angel give to Lot as they brought him and his family outside the city? A. Do not look back at the city. B. Do not stay anywhere in the plain. C. Flee to the mountains. D. All of the above. You get 10 seconds. That's D. All of the above. Genesis chapter 19 verse 17. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed. These instructions reflected the divine guidance and protection extended to the righteous in the face of imminent judgment. Question 21. What alternative city did Lot propose to escape instead of fleeing to the mountains? A. Zohar B. Bethel C. Jericho D. Jerusalem You get 10 seconds. That's A. Zohar Genesis chapter 19, verses 18 to 22. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. Question 22. What punishment did God bring upon Sodom and Gomorrah as Lot entered Zoar? A. Frozen in ice. B. Deadly famine. C. Death of the firstborn. D. Devastation by fire and brimstone. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Devastation by fire and brimstone. Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. The catastrophic event serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of persistent sin and disobedience. Question 23. How extensively did the Lord overthrow the cities of the plain? A. Partial destruction. B. Destruction of a few buildings. C. Minimal impact on the cities. D. Destruction of the entire plain and its inhabitants. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Destruction of the entire plain and its inhabitants. Genesis chapter 19, verse 25. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. This detail underscores God's commitment to righteousness and his intolerance for unrepentant wickedness. Question 24. What happened to Lot's wife who ignored a warning not to look back when fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah? A. She was unaffected. B. She was struck by lightning. C. She was transformed into a pillar of salt. D. She disappeared mysteriously. You get 10 seconds.
That's C. She was transformed into a pillar of salt. Genesis chapter 19 verse 26. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. This event serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of heeding divine instructions and avoiding attachment to a sinful past. Question 25. What did Abraham observe when he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah the morning after the destruction? A. Rebuilding efforts. B. Signs of celebration. C. Smoke rising like a furnace. D. A deserted landscape. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Smoke rising like a furnace. Genesis chapter 19 verse 28. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. The sight symbolized the intense and all-encompassing nature of the divine judgment unleashed upon these cities. Oh, wow! What an extraordinary voyage into the narratives of Nineveh and Sodom, unraveling the profound depths of God's compassion and his unyielding commitment to righteousness. Now, it's your turn to share your experience. Drop a comment below and let us know how many questions you got right and the profound lessons you've extracted from this narrative. Your insights are invaluable and contribute to the collective wisdom of our community. If you found this quiz enlightening, do your part by sharing this video with your friends and family. Let's spread the knowledge and appreciation for the restoration of the temple. Together, we can create a ripple effect of understanding. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening expedition. Keep the conversation going, keep sharing, and most importantly, keep learning.